Well, good morning, Calvary Bible Church. We are so glad that you have tuned in to our online service today. We want to make you aware of some big news that is coming. Um, but before we do that, I want to make you aware of uh, something else. We have for our Calvary kids uh, a service designed for them. So go to our website, calvarybible.us, and go to the Church at Home tab and click on that and then click on Calvary Kids and this week's service will pop up for your kids. Um, the other thing we want you to know is that for this service, if you want sermon notes or the service, if, if the sermon in Spanish with uh, the translation of it, um, the video for that is, is in the description as well as the sermon notes for today's message. Over the last few weeks, we have been uh, discussing and praying and preparing as the leadership team of Calvary Bible Church uh, how we can, when the time is right, uh, meet in person again and have in-person services. And because of the stay-at-home order lifted in our, our discussions and our preparation, we have made the decision that we will reopen uh, in-person services starting May 24th at our normal 10.45 a.m. service time. Now, we want you to know that this is going to be a redesigned service with sanitation, touchless environment, and the best practices for social distancing built into the service. This is important to us because we want you to be safe. We want to uh, make sure that uh, we can keep people healthy in the best way that we can. Um, and so we're going to take precautions for them. Uh, so if you are wanting to, to join us in our in-person service, um, we have been we have emailed out uh, just some information of what that service is going to look like and some of the things that we're asking everyone who comes uh, to do to help us uh, have a safe uh, environment. Um, so if you want that information, you didn't get the email. Uh, go to calvarybible.us, go to the homepage, click on coronavirus updates, and you can see all of the information that you need for uh, the things that we're asking of everyone to help uh, in this time, uh, this, this different season, uh, and we'll redesign our Sunday morning services for the weeks to come. Now, uh, we also want you to know that we are continuing to monitor the situation and if anything changes, we might change our approach. We also, the last thing I want to do is if you are in a spot where you, your family, or your situation, you still don't feel comfortable coming uh, in person to our service, we completely understand. We want to encourage you to continue to worship with us uh, in our online worship service. Uh, we are so excited that this ministry uh, has been uh, meeting so many people. We love you guys. We're so grateful uh, that we can do ministry and life with you forever. Why don't we take this time and go into a time of worship together today?
Well, good morning. We are in week two of Live Fearlessly, and I am so excited about this week in particular. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open up to Joshua chapter six. The title of my message this morning is How to Overcome Obstacles. And I'm really excited about this week because this week reminds me of my childhood, okay? This week brings me back to children's church. Um, for some of us, probably bring us back to Sunday school. Uh, we're going to be talking about Joshua and the battle of Jericho today. And for many of us, we probably haven't read this scripture in years because it's just something that's like, eh, it's a kid's story. But there are some amazing truths in here that I want us to talk about on how to overcome obstacles like the Israelites did. Joshua had the challenge of leading these people after 40 years of being in the wilderness. And then to say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you out of this. And, and I'm going to bring you to the promised land that God has for you for us as a people. And, and he looks at them and says, but we're going to have to face some challenges. And challenges is what we talked about last week, overcoming, going over the Jordan River and, and crossing at, that, at the season that it was high tide. It was, the rivers were high. And this was a difficult season to cross over. And, and now they're over that. And now they go, okay, we got we to gotta, we gotta take on Jericho. And Jericho's an ancient city, but it's a technologically a marvel for that time period. And, and this is why it's a technological marvel. Because the, the walls of this city, the walls of this city were, uh, let's see here, it says it, that they were about six feet thick. The first, the outer wall was six feet thick, 20 feet high, the inner walls were 12 feet thick and 30 feet high. And between the walls, there was a 15 uh, foot wide guard walkway. This was an impenetrable powerhouse of a wall. This isn't your ordinary <laughs> picket fence. These walls were meant to never be penetrated and never be scaled. These walls were set up in a place where they could, where, where could keep their enemies out. And yet God goes to the people of Israel in Joshua chapter six, starting at three, he says, I want you to march around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram horn in front of the ark, on the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout, then the walls of the city will completely fall uh, and everyone will go straight in. This to me, this to me is the, you know, the perfect, you know, children's shirt. And they're like, oh, this, this makes sense, right? So God tells them to walk around a wall and to, <laughs> and the next, on the seventh day, scream loud and the walls are just going to fall down, okay? Well, we know what happened. So in that mindset, we can see kind of ahead and we can go, okay, well, this, this makes sense. We should, we should do this. But this is an absolutely ridiculous request. <laughs> but the Bible tells us in many times, it says, mm, um, there is way that seems right in man's eye, but in the end it leads to death. In Proverbs 14, 12, it says, God's ways is always, um, it, God's way is not always our ways. Here's Joshua instructed by God to do something absolutely ridiculous. I mean, this was the plan. Verses three to five, basically the plan is march around the city, seventh day, march around seven times and yell at the top of your lungs and the walls will fall down. Ridiculous, utterly ridiculous. Yet this is what God asked them to do. 
One of the things that I think is interesting and what God is symbolizing, he says in the beginning of this, if you did, he says, I want you to put the Ark of the Covenant ahead with the priests around it and then the armed men to, to, to walk behind it. Why is God telling them to do it this way? Is because he's basically putting them and saying, this is the visual I want you to have. This isn't your battle. This is my battle. I go before you. That's, that's what he's demonstrating by saying that I, I am sending the Ark of Covenant ahead of your army, ahead of the men that are going to, to take this city because I go before you that this battle is not yours. This battle is mine. And that's powerful right there. That, that to me, and so when he puts prominence on that, he emphasizes that this is how I want you to march. Not just march around aimlessly. I want you to do it this way because this means I'm ahead of you. I'm going forth and I'm gonna do this for you. And the message was clear. And this is the thing that's interesting to me. Now it does say that they were armed and they had weapons, but, but were these people warriors? Not really. I mean, you think about their history. They were slaves. This was the bulk of their you know, lives and their parents' lives and their grandparents' lives and their great-grandparents' lives. Slavery. So all they knew how to, they knew how to build stuff, but they didn't know how to fight. And then they get to this place and then they were in the wilderness for 40 years and you would think, okay, well, at least there in the 40 years, they would, they would have gained some skill to hunt for their food, right? They would have to, to become hunters and gatherers and all of that because they needed to survive in the wilderness for 40 years. No, no, uh, God provided for them all their food. So I don't think the people of God, when they got to Jericho, where they were ready for battle, even if they had weaponry, they were not warriors. Most likely, they were wimps. Right? If you're given something long enough, if you're, you're handed something long enough, you don't need to, to do, step outside yourself and, and, and be, there's no enemy, there's nobody trying to take over your place. Like, th- th- you don't have to do, uh, you know, defend yourself. You're not going to be able to when you have to. <laughs> and so these people were not warriors walking into Jericho saying, we're going to take this city, this impenetrable city, We're wimps. (laughs) And yet God says to them, I am going to go before you in this obstacle, which is the city of Jericho, and it's an unsolvable problem to you, but not for me. This vast, powerful, directly in their path obstacle seemed undefeatable. The question is, is do we have problems like that in our lives? And for the Israelites, they had a strange solution that Lord, the Lord laid out for them. You know, it's interesting. I came across this study and it was talking about how 74% of Americans today struggle with sleep. They either can't fall asleep. They turn and toss and turn all night long. They either get woken up and then can't go back to sleep or they just struggle in all aspects of their sleep and they they wake up more tired than they did um, going to bed. 74% of us. And some of the major reasons were stress, worry, fear, life's problems, you're just you can't shut your mind off. And we're dealing with so many things, even now in this time. And so you look at this situation, you said, man, I, I, got, I got obstacles, I got things, I got bills to pay, I got, I got I, I'm all these things that I'm trying to figure out, and I can't sleep. And it seems like it's never going to change. And that pill you've tried, and that thing you doctors described, the mask you wear, doesn't change it doesn't help. Maybe it helps a little, but it doesn't take it away. You know, what's amazing is the number one kind of book that sells is a self-help book. It's the the most popular books around, self-help books, because we are trying to figure out our problems and solve them on our own. And what the lesson we need to learn and what we're going to learn over the next few weeks 
is that God is the only one able to solve our problems. He can solve our problems. We don't need to. That God alone, if we surrender to him our problems, God will take them. But he expects us to encompass or encircle our problems. And he does this in a couple different ways. I want to I want to look at three ways he wants us to encircle our problems. He wants us to encircle the problem with prayer. He wants us to circle our problem with prayer. Oftentimes, God uh, tells people that, that he wants them to pray. He tells people, Lord, the, the Bible did this by, for people and he prayed for them. And they had unsolvable problems uh, and he encompasses them with prayer. And God moves in their lives. I, I can look at many different circumstances where this happened, where, where they prayed. They encircled their problem with prayer and God moved. Abraham's servant searching for uh, Isaac's bride in Genesis 24, he encircles the problem with prayer. Uh, the Israelites in Exodus 14, as they're standing at the water of the Red Sea, waiting for God to split it, they encircled that problem with prayer. Hezekiah facing an invasion from Assyria in 2 Kings 19, he encircles his problem with prayer. The church prays for Peter, his deliverance in Acts 12. They encircled their problem with fear, or I mean with prayer, and not giving over to fear, worry. But if we're honest with ourselves, as we talked about it in the last series that we did, uh, do we give ourselves over to prayer? Is our first thought when we're facing something, when we're struggling something, is it to encircle that problem with prayer or to encircle that problem with worry, stress, fear? Do we go to God and say, God, I am... This is the circumstance, this is the situation, this is the problem that I'm facing today, and I'm just going to keep praying. I'm going to circle around this prayer. I'm going to stomp this ground down until the prayer works. The second thing God wants us to do is to encircle the problem with praise. On the seventh day, Joshua said, shout for the Lord has given you this city. The ability to praise God in the midst of impossible and uh, is, possibilities is a powerful secret for us. You know, it's easy to praise God. It's easy to, to, to be thankful when you have things to be thankful for and, it's, and when things are going well. But I don't know about you, but for me, some of the most powerful worship experiences, the most connected I've ever felt with God is not when things are going absolutely great in my life, but when things are absolutely falling apart. And I'm like, I don't feel like worshiping. I don't feel like giving you praise today. I don't feel like being thankful, but I'm going to do it anyway. And you have such an amazing encounter with God. And this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to encircle our problems with praise. To say, God, you are worthy, you are better, you are stronger, you are mightier. Because if we remember how big and how awesome he is, our problems will not seem so big and so difficult to overcome. If we encircle our problems with praise. And the last one is to encircle the problem with faith. For Joshua and the Israelites, this was an act of faith. Let's go around this strange wall that they probably didn't know the dimensions of, and if they did, that would have probably scared them even more. And let's just walk around it. Why? Simply because God told me to. Let's encircle our problems with faith like the Israelites. 
in Hebrews 11.30. I love this because it, it describes the, th- what happened in the Old Testament. It says, by faith, this is the faith section, chapter 11. It talks about different people in the history that live by faith. And it's talking about this right now. It says, it says by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. Joshua and the people of God demonstrated deep confidence in the power of God. How? By being obedient. (laughs) By taking one step and another step all the way around the city. I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if this is going to change anything. But this is what God asked me to do, and I'm going to take every step he asked me to. And by faith, I am trusting in God that he will help me through. So when we have an insolvable problem, and we encompass it with prayer and praise, and we continually walk around them by faith until the walls fall and the Lord sends his deliverance. This is how we should live, that we should encompass and encircle our problems with prayer and circle them with praise and then walk confidently in faith, knowing that God will deliver us from our problems. Maybe not today, because here's the thing. Encompassing our problems, encompassing the problem with perseverance isn't going to be easy. Notice that the success they were looking for, the result that they were wanting, these walls to fall down, didn't happen day one, day two, even day three or four or five or six, even halfway through day seven, the results they were looking for did not take place. But they kept persevering. They said, I'm going to do what God asked me to do, and I'm going to continue by faith. I'm sure the Israelites grew weary at times. I'm sure they, they grew frustrated at times. I'm sure they had doubts at times. There's a difference between saying, I, I doubt, I don't know if this is going to work. I question whether this is going to work. But if God tells me to do it, I'm going to keep going anyway than stopping altogether. They've seen the results of that. When their parents did the same thing, their grandparents did the same thing, they said, we've seen what God has done to this point, but we don't believe God can take care of that problem in front of us, and so we're going to stop short of the promise God has for us because we doubt. Well, we learn from the mistakes too and say, you know what? Even when we doubt, I'm not done walking. I'm going to keep moving. That even, even when we, we feel like ah, this, this seems crazy and ridiculous, but God, if you've called me to it, this is not too big for you. And I'm going to trust you through the process. You know, it's funny because we look at this story and we can say from past and go, you know what, as kids we would hear this story and, you know, we know the results and that the, the walls fell down and, and that's awesome. <laughs> but this is a ridiculous request. This, this, isn't, this, this isn't like a logical, like, if we do this, logically the walls will fall down. If we just keep walking around something, then the walls will fall down. I mean, it's as ridiculous a request as to say, you know what, if God came to you and said today that if you walk around your house every day, and on the seventh day you do it seven times, and then you shout to your neighbors that the pandemic will be over. Some of us are like, if that, if that worked, I would do it. <laughs> I'm ready for the pandemic to be over. I'm going to go around my house. I'm, I'm going to walk right now. I'm getting my phone out, and I'll just listen to the rest of the service, and I'm going to walk around my house. Okay, It's not going to really work. Okay, But for some of us, we're like, you know what? Have you been to my house? Because I, I pretty much go outside every day and scream because <laughs> I just, my kids are driving me crazy. <laughs> so there's a lot of screaming going around in my house, and the pandemic getting over. <laughs> But as ridiculous of a statement as that is, that's what God was asking them to do. To step out of their faith and say, I'm going to persevere, even though it doesn't make sense. 
And unfortunately, God makes, doesn't always make sense. He puts all the pieces together and he doesn't always make sense, but his ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. And to me, this is no more uh, evident than in this last part right here. So Joshua chapter 6, verse 5. See, if, if we were to say, okay, God, you knocked down the walls. That's what we need to do. We need to get the walls down. And then once we get the walls down, then we can go into the city and we can take over the city and I can, I can take over from there. And that's what we do a lot of times. We say, well, God, you do this part, I'll do my part, and we'll just kind of, you know, I got the idea once I get to that point. Well, God says, you know what? No, I, I think this thing through further than you can think. We'll be like, well, but I think I understand this better. I think I, I know what needs to happen better than, than you, God. That sounds stupid coming out of my mouth, but we think that all the time. And God's like, no, no, I thought this whole thing through. I'm going to knock this down in your life your life if you're faithful. If you persevere, if you encircle this with prayer and with praise and continue to walk by faith. Because I'm going to do this. Not only am I going to walk, knock down the walls. It says in verse 5, it says, and the walls will fall down flat. I didn't even think about that. Okay, you have these massive six-foot-wide walls, 12-foot-high, 12-foot-wide, 30-foot-high walls. They fall down. There's still a lot of rubble you're going to have to climb up and over to get, even get into the city. And God goes, no, 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 no. I even think that far in advance. My plan is that not only will we, the walls, I'll take care of the walls, I'll take care of the obstacles in your life. Come on, somebody. This is... This is powerful right here. Think about this. The walls, I'm going to take care of the walls falling in your life. If you walk by faith and you trust me when I'm at, I'm going to take care of the walls and I'm not even going to just knock them over, but I'm going to make them flat in your life and that you are just going to be able to casually stroll right over. What was a massive obstacle, what was an unseemingly unprecedented um, uh, burden in your life that you thought you would never overcome, God is going to have you stroll right over them because I'm not going to just take out the obstacle. I'm going to make them flat under your feet. Makes me think of the song, he's under my feet. He's under my feet. Satan is under our feet. Our obstacles are not too big for God. If God goes before us, the battle is not ours. It's his. This is the, this is the point. If you want to focus in on this, that God wants us to encircle our, our problems with prayer today. He wants to encircle our problems with praise today. And then he wants us to walk by faith, knowing that he goes before us, that he's got the battle taken care of, and we will walk over those problems someday like they were nothing. Just trust him. Persevere. It may not happen in day one. It may not happen in day two, three, four, five. It may be years from now when you see the victory. But the victory will come. Just walk by faith. And the obstacles in your life will crumble under our feet. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word and its truth and its potency for us today, that, that it speaks life for us today, that we, we can walk by faith, that not only do you see the obstacle in front of us, but you also think beyond the obstacle and that someday we will walk over that obstacle like it is flattened and that we will walk over it and that you will remove it from our sight if we allow you to go before us. That if we remember your ways are higher, your thoughts are higher, you understand more, you can see further beyond what we are. We, our problems may seem impenetrable, impossible to us, but God, you will make a way just like you did for the Israelites. 
Help us to not live in fear of our problems, not live in worry of our problems, not stress out about our problems, not lose sleep about our problems, but to encircle our problems with prayer and praise and faith. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.